this uh, introduction on use case diagrams in Papyrus. And I assume that you have created a Papyrus project with a, with a Papyrus model in there, which I have already opened. Um, and as you can see here, this, this whole thing is empty right now, so that there are no, no diagrams, no views. Um, and also, if you look here in the Model Explorer, everything is empty. So if I want to create a new use case diagram, um, I personally, that's a personal preference, I always think it's good to structure this a bit, that, for example, you keep everything that's related to the use case diagram in a package. Um, this is mainly uh, done so that you can later structure your model. If you, for example, want to generate code from only part of it, it's a bit easier to separate it into maybe a different file. Um, so everything I'll keep in here. And to, to create a diagram, I right click here and I said new diagram, use case diagram. And of course, I should give them some kind of name. In this case, I think I will uh, create a diagram for a health information system. Let's give this a name that is clear. Um, Generally, if, if you use the palette here on the right side to create something, it will always be created where the diagram is placed. Um, so in this case, if, if the diagram is in this package, all the elements will also be created in that package. Good, and I, I won't introduce everything here. I will just introduce the things that I personally use most and then we will use in, in the course that I am teaching. Um, and this is basically actors, use cases, packages to a little extent. Um, and then associations extend and exclude statements and generalization between actors. Uh, that's all I'm using, but of course there are many more things. And if you're interested in this uh, stuff, as always, look at the UML spec. Um, we, we start off by creating a couple of actors. So in this case, for example, I would like to have a nurse um, and I would like to have a doctor as my two actors in a hospital. Uh, and I'll, I'll create another actor, which is sort of an external, uh, it's an external drugstore. So maybe I only call it drugstore, it's a bit better. Um, and this is where the hospital orders uh, drugs, pharmaceuticals, basically. Uh, now I have my three actors here. And one option is to, what, now when I will create my use cases, to actually place them in a package or so on, to make clear that this is part of the system. Um, so I could create a package here um, saying HIS, for example, that this is making clear, okay, here is my system placed and the actors are actually outside of it. Um, another option is if you maybe already have an architecture is that you can create uh, different components that I can say this, this is a component, for example, um, and I will create use cases in there. I won't be doing this here because... Uh, personally, I use use cases mostly on a on a very early stage where you don't yet have an architecture, for example. Uh, and this is also why the, the package is just, it, I'm just using an, an acronym here. I could call it something else, but there is no defined hierarchy yet in my packages or so on that has anything to do with the implementation. Um, so now I have my actors and now I want to create a bunch of use cases. So for example, the nurse, I want to be able to uh, add a journal entry. So if you have a patient and the patient has, has a patient journal, then the nurse can make comments what, uh, what is going on with the patient. That's one of the use cases and I want the nurse to be associated with it so I can use the association to actually draw an arrow. Um, now the thing is I also want the doctor to be able to do that uh, because in some cases the doctor will also want to do journal entries. Um, especially when there's maybe some advanced stuff needed, diagnosis or so on. Um, so one thing is I could draw an association from the doctor to the journal entry. Um, but in this case, I want to say that the doctor should be able to do everything the nurse can do. And in this case, I'll use the generalization for that. So I, I draw a generalization from doctor to nurse. And now the semantics is that the doctor can also do journal entries. Um, let's add another use case for the doctor to prescribe uh, medicine. Um, and I only want the doctor to be able to do that. So in this case, the nurse can't. Um, and now we're lacking uh, some use case that has to do with the drugstore. And 
One way to to put this in this in this example is that we say we have a use case that is somehow for the drugs that is actually related to the drugstore. Um, now there could be two different ways of including this into the rest here. Um, one of them is to say prescribed medicine actually includes this use case. So I in, I use the include arrow here. Uh, and semantically in UML this means that order drugs is actually not complete itself. So it's not a it's sort of not a standalone use case. Um, and you can, if you imagine a system that the doctor would use, you can imagine this as order drugs is nothing that you can select from the menu, for example. Um, but it's actually something that only is being called when prescribed medicine is uh, is being called is being executed by the doctor. Um, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to say that I want the doctor to be able to do this as well. So maybe you want to offer a, a use case, a menu element that says, yes, please order drugs uh, directly, but I still want to use it in here. And in this case, I would probably use the extends uh, arrow. So the prescribed medicine is extending order drugs with some functionality, in this case, additionally to ordering something you directly associated with a patient. Um, this is sort of the, the high-level overview that, that I typically use, um, which is already enough to give a good overview of the system and to discuss different things. Uh, I will show one last thing because it's a general thing in UML and that's comments. Uh, so you might want to say, uh, you might want to add a comment here, for example, regarding this uh, order drugs shall be available both as standalone and as a part of prescribed medicine. So just to, to make sure that in half a year when we look at this diagram, we still remember why we used extend and not include, uh, that I can add a comment and I can actually use the comment link to link it to whatever I want. So I could link it to the use case. Uh, I could also link it to the arrow itself. That's up to me. But that's a way in all diagrams actually to add comments, uh, which can help readability later on. Yes. and. Now I've actually only worked in this uh, view up here, but whenever you select something and it's a general papyrus thing, uh, you can also always go down to the properties view and for example here I can change the, the name of the, of the nurse if I want to. So you can make changes here. Um, some of these things are quite complex because they basically show you all the different options that you can have that UML offers you. So especially if you go to the advanced tab down here you will have uh, a lot of things but in most cases you get along with only few, especially if you only, only want to do visualization. Good, and I save this and that's all for this tutorial.